bunch of people went to Boston for a weekend to meet with um, another group of Jewish women that was doing something similar there. And uh, that they were sort of loosely connected with Chavarot Shalom. And uh, in the course of that weekend, we were sort of discussing what we had learned from our uh, studies, which led us to believe that this kind of extreme sex role differentiation was not necessary. And they said, you know, you really need to go public with this. You, you really need to do something about it. Don't just keep this within a study group. And, well, we, and we said, well, you know, how can we go public? And they said, well, just, you know, do something. So um, shortly thereafter, we went to, uh, that was, that's what impelled us to send uh, a letter. There was a, a meeting coming up uh, like a month or two later of the rabbinical assembly, which was the uh, rabbi's movement of the conservative movement. They met every year in the Concord in Kayamisha Lake and the Cats Catskills. And uh, so, you know, there we were, you know, the eight or ten schleppers from Ezrat Nashim, and we sent them a letter saying, you know, we want to come and make a presentation to your, to the rabbis and about equality for women. Um, and we wrote up a one-page thing called Jewish Women Call for Change. And we called the New York Times and the New York Post. The New York Post was a different New York Post than this, this rag that's now there now. It was a pretty was a left-ish kind of magazine, uh, uh, newspaper. And we said, you know, we're going to the Rhythmical Assembly. And they came and interviewed us and took pictures. And uh, we went. We just, we drove up in two cars. It was uh, March 1972. And we appeared at the Rabbinical Assembly. And the fact is, they were really nice, you know. They, uh, we demanded a room to speak to the rabbis and to speak to the rabbis' wives because at that point there were no female rabbis, of course, and they would have programs like in flower arranging and fashion and stuff like this. I mean, it was really disgusting for the rabbis' wives. So we said we wanted to meet with the rabbis' wives as well. And they were really sweet. I mean, they made a space and a time for us to ha have a meeting uh, with the rabbis who wanted to come. There must have been, I think a couple hundred probably came. Um, and they, oh, and that morning, a story with a picture appeared in the New York Post. So there it was, we were shocked. Um, so we spoke to these rabbis about the need for equality and equal participation. It was We were calling for uh, counting, I mean, counting women in a minion, allowing women to be mem full members of synagogues, uh, giving women access to rabbinical school and cantorial school and uh, positions of leadership within the Jewish community, equal access to Jewish higher education, pretty minimal equality stuff, basically equality. We didn't know what to ask for beyond that. Um, and there was a very you know, heated uh, debate among the, we brought copies of these articles and of this call for change and asked the rabbis to take the message back to their communities and some of them basically said you know if this happens it'll be the fall of Judaism and the fall of Western civilization and others were very excited um, and then we met with the later that afternoon I guess with the rabbis wives and we didn't really know what kind of uh, reception we would get from them. And I remember very clearly at one point uh, this, what I remember now is this little old woman stood up and we thought, you know, we didn't know who, you know, what she was going to say. And she was the, it turns out, the wife of H.L. Ginsburg, who was a major biblical scholar and rabbi and teacher at the seminary. And she said, what I want to know is, what I want to know is, where have you been all these years? <laughs> and it was just like, it was so wonderful, you know, it was just really exciting. 